Hey, welcome to Sci-Fi Secrets. So today's video is about the novel The Moat in God's Eye and its sequel The Gripping Hand. These were written by Larry Niven and Jerry Pornell. These novels break the mold when it comes to your cliche sci-fi first interaction with an alien race. Instead of your typical brainless evil just to be evil aliens, you get a much more realistic threat. Competition for resources with a better adapted race. This is how the extinction of countless species on Earth happened. Will humanity be next? Okay, I will be including some very minor spoilers here, but nothing that will take away any of the surprises. So if you don't want to hear anything that will ruin your enjoyment, in my opinion, this video is about as safe as it gets while still actually talking about the book. The Modis are an asymmetrical species, with one arm on one side and two on the other. They are broken into three main races with several other minor races. The three main races are Masters, Modis with white fur, Engineers, Modis with brown fur, and the Mediators, who are mixes of the brown and white Modis, both in coloring and parentage. Meaning that they are what happens when a, when a Master and an Engineer have kids, and their brown and white spotted fur reflects this. Master Modis live up to their names and command the other Modis. They excel at tactics and management of both items and workers. The engineer Modis excel at innovation and technical understanding, and can't stop themselves from upgrading any tech they find, but they have little interest in communication. The mediators are just that. They are the diplomats, and the go-betweens, not just between the other races and the masters, but also between different Modi clans, which due to the fact that Modis must breed periodically or die, leading to massive overpopulation, they are all constantly at war. The single arm on one side seems to be a mutation that happened somewhat recently in their evolution, as another creature related to their species is symmetrical, with two arms on each side. These creatures are known as watchmakers, and they share a lot of the engineers' fascination with fiddling with things, something that can be quite problematic on a spaceship. The makeup of the Modi species allows them to both be able to develop tech much faster than humanity through the engineers, as well as also, the masters are smart enough and good enough tacticians to see what they need and how they need it. This combined with the ridiculous reproductive rate of the Modis allows the Modi civilization to adapt much faster than humanity and spread much faster throughout the galaxy. When humanity realizes that the Modis can outcompete humanity for the galaxy's resources, they develop a plan. The FTL drive in this universe is known to the humans as the Alderson drive, but it's known to the Modis as the Crazy Eddy drive. This is because despite the engineers of the Modis developing it several times in several different variations, the result was always the same. Any Modi that used the drive never returned. They blinked out into the universe and never came back. Every single time. Humanity, on the other hand, was much luckier. They developed the Alderson drive and used it just fine. It functioned just as expected. They blinked off into another part of the universe, then popped right back at will. So what happened to the Modi ships? Well, unbeknownst to them, the Alderson Drive required specific points in space to jump to, and while the Earth had several around to choose from, all safe to jump to, the Modi homeworld, Mo Prime, thanks to its location in space, had only one. And that point was inside the photosphere of a star known as Murchison's Eye. So every time a Modi ship jumped away from their solar system, it jumped into the interior of a star and was instantly destroyed. So when the first human ship appeared in Modi space, they were obviously very confused. You see, humanity had also developed the Langston Field, an energy-absorbing shield for the ship that can allow it to survive inside the photosphere of a star for a limited amount of time. These shields were pitch black when first deployed, but as they absorbed more energy, they would start to grow a dull red, then brighter and brighter until they became white hot and burst, at which point the ship they were supposed to protect was now vulnerable. Humanity used this to get inside the Modi star system, but they also brought with them the proof that it was possible to get out. As the Modis learned more and more about the visiting humans' technology, and as the humans learned what a danger to humanity they were just by being better at everything that made humans humans, an unintentional war broke out. The humans wanted to contain the Modis in the solar system, but they were the ones who had given the Modis the knowledge that it was possible to get out in the first place. The humans wanted to unring that bell, but that was obviously impossible. So they set up a blockade in Murchison's Eye, with rotating ships there ready to destroy any Modi ship that came through. 
Some of them still came without the new Langston Field shields and blew up on their own, but others had discovered the Langston Field thanks to the human ships having them on board, and the engineers, being too smart to not notice them, did just that right away. Then once the battles broke out and the Modi saw them in action and saw how valuable they could be, they developed their own. But true to Modi style, they upgraded them. So now the Modis had the drives and they had better shields than the humans. But luck was still on humanity's side. The improvements the Modis made to the shields were completely overpowered in traditional battles. Instead of just glowing red, then white, and finally breaking, the Modis version would grow in size using the energy it received from anything attacking it. Meaning that as you fired weapons at the shield, it just got bigger and bigger. This made them almost impossible to destroy in traditional ways. But the blockade in Merchant's Eye was inside the photosphere of a star. So the bigger the Modi shield grew, the more surface area it had to absorb even more energy from the nuclear reactions of the star, until it became too large for the ship's systems, at which point it stopped growing, but now had a massive surface area to rapidly absorb too much energy, causing it to quickly glow white and burst. If it was not for this bit of bad luck, the Modis may have broken free of the moat right away, but now, an extended blockade has kept the stalemate going. It seems inevitable that the Modis will eventually break free. Their luck has to change, eventually. So how will this blockade end? Will it result in the end of humanity when it does? Well, you'll just have to read The Moat in God's Eye yourself to see. Well, if you like that at all, please like, comment, subscribe. I'm uh, trying to grow the channel, so uh, a sub would really help me out. It's free. You just click the little button down there in the corner. So anyway, um, thanks for staying this long, and hopefully I'll see you back here for ne the next video.